Great pleasure right now to welcome to our book talk segment, a very timely book as we uh, head into the Mother's Day season, and it is called My Mother's Kitchen, Breakfast, Lunch, Dinner, and the Meaning of Life. We're joined today by a very talented man. He's an author, screenwriter, playwright, book editor, and a film and television producer, and uh, Peter Gethers joined us by telephone today. Peter, good to talk with you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for the nice intro. H- how are things up in uh, my former hometown? You live in New York City and Long Island, right? I do, and I'm calling in from Manhattan, from my office in Manhattan, and it's a wonderful day, and I do have to say I'm a bit of a New York fanatic, so I think almost every day is a wonderful day in the city. I, I do miss it. I don't get up there as often as I'd like, but uh, it's a great place and uh, and great food, and, and that's what kind of this book is about a bit. Your mother, of course, and and, and her uh, career as a, as, a, as a cook in the restaurant business, but kind of your relationship with her as well, uh, particularly in the last years of her life, right? Exactly right. Um, My mother came from a restaurant family, and if you're from New York, you probably know of it. There was a literally a world-famous celebrated restaurant called Ratner's, which was on the Lower East Side of New York, and it was a Jewish dairy restaurant. And if you were talking to the right crowd almost anywhere in the world, they would basically bow down to you if you said the word Ratner's. (laughs) It was not fine cuisine, as I say in the book. It's the kind of restaurant where about midway through the meal, you could actually feel your arteries starting to harden. <laughs> and my mother progressed from that. She never worked in the restaurant, but her family started it. Her father started it in 1905, actually, when it finally closed uh, about 16 or 17 years ago. It was the longest continuously run family restaurant in New York. Um, my parents moved to Los Angeles, and when my mother was 53 years old, she took her first job ever out of the home. She wanted to become a good good French cook. She was offered a chance to work in a brand new French restaurant in L.A. She could work there for free. Uh, they said they would work her to the bone. She would work three nights a week, and the owner said, at the end of a year, you will be a good French cook. And it turned out the baby chef there, who no one had heard of at the time, was a guy named Wolfgang Puck. And while well, he mentored my mom in the kitchen, she, over the course of that year, mentored him and all the other young chefs in the L.A. food world, and she really became a second mother to them. She mentored them in life while they mentored her in the kitchen. At the end of a year, she not only had this whole new food family, uh, she became the queen of L.A. and New York food circles, really, over the next few years. But at the end of the year, she opened up a cooking school and was cooking alongside and teaching alongside people like Julia Child. And it changed her life completely, changed our lives completely. And food really became sort of the central thing that held our family together and helped my mother turn into the person she became over the next few decades. Yeah, that restaurant, uh, very famous restaurant in L.A. called Ma Maison, which uh, yeah, people exactly know all right. over the world. And of course, Wolfgang Puck uh, has gone on to uh, become very famous and, and sells a lot of his cookware down here in Florida, Home Shopping Network. So we see it yeah, down here he, quite a bit. He sure does. <laughs> yeah, he sure does. Did she he add a lot of time now? Oh, yeah. Did she add a lot of, uh, or a little bit of, I guess she had to add a little bit of that kosher style into her cooking and French cooking, right? Kind of combine it a little bit, a little fusion well, there? Or? Well, well, I'll tell you what was funny is uh, Wolf's restaurant, after he left Mama's, Mama's home, became a very famous restaurant called Spago. Sure. And it was a pizza and pasta restaurant. Now there's Spago all, you know, all over the country and all over the world, Spago cafes. But the original Spago was one restaurant in L.A., and, um, you know, it was a, a restaurant for the stars. A lot of movie stars came in there and stuff like that. And Wolf started a Passover Seder every year at Ratner's. Uh, I mean, at Ratner's, at Spago. And uh, my mother's contribution was she made and then taught all the fine chefs there how to make matzo ball soup with the matzo balls. <laughs> and on the menu there, they, they my mother died a year ago, but on the menu this year for Passover, it still lists as they give the menu, and it's now a big charity dinner and all that. It always says Judy Gathers matzo balls. <laughs> so, she, yeah, she managed to get her roots in there, in, in, in between the smoked salmon pizza and things like that. What was great about reading through the book, again, as I said, I'm, I'm from that area, but, uh, you know, obviously the love of, of food you both have in your family, and, and after your mom unfortunately had the stroke, you still were able to kind of, uh, you know, uh, communicate uh, as far as that goes with, with food, right? It still was a big part of her life. Well, that, that, 
that was what was so interesting. My mother had a devastating stroke when she was 84 years old. And I was told she would never speak or move again, that she would have locked-in syndrome. And the doctors were pretty definitive about this. And two days after I got this dire uh, evaluation, my mother told me a joke and laughed. And three weeks after that, she went into rehab. I mean, she literally had to relearn how to swallow. She didn't even, she had to learn how to eat again. Three weeks after that, she walked into a Christmas party because she refused to be wheeled in. And six weeks after that, she was back in her own apartment and reliving her life. But while physically she was greatly diminished, the one thing that never left her was her sense of taste. And taste and food became a real connection for her to the outside world. She couldn't cook anymore but she still had this perfect palate. And I decided I really wanted to learn more about my mom because I began to appreciate even more her strength and her stubbornness and her will of steel and her remarkably wise and funny view of life through all this. And I decided the way to do that was to learn about her, the food she loved. And so I got her to give me, even in her aphasic post-stroke state, a breakfast, lunch, and dinner menu that was her fantasy meals, that were his, her fantasy meals. And over the next couple of years, I learned to cook everything, some of them really simple, some of them way beyond my level of skill. <laughs> but I learned to do it all, and the whole time I was doing it, we talked and I learned about her and our family and my father and just life in general, both in and out of the kitchen. And during this process, I went, you know, I'm a writer. I should write about this because my mother's life is worth writing about and what I'm learning is worth conveying to people. So that's how it really all happened because of our food connection. Okay, and between the, the, you know, the great stories you tell, you do have some recipes as well for uh, those of us out there who would like I, to make some of those dishes. I, they're all makeable, and if, if anyone reads the book, you will realize that, uh, I mean, I think it's the most fun part of the book are the 15 or 16 or so recipes that I have in between the family memoir. I bumble my way through all these recipes. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing, but you know what? They all turned out good. <laughs> well, one thing I miss down here, and there are a few delis, but there's nothing like the New York, particularly New York Jewish deli here in uh, our part yeah, of the state, so I, I do miss that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a unique part of New York culture and kind of a great part. Peter, uh, give out uh, the website if, if you have one, get people get more information about your book. They, they can, I, I actually don't really have an author website, although I have an author page on barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com, and I'm on all social media, Twitter and Instagram, and people can buy the book at any online bookseller or any brick and mortar bookseller. It's uh, and I'll even if if uh, you give me a call, I'll even come to your house and read it aloud to you. There you, you go. Buy a copy. So, you know, <laughs> I have no pride when it comes. To this. this is an important book to me, and I really want people to read it. You know, I think there's good life lessons in this book. Uh, I failed, failed to mention the beginning. You also did a, a great off-Broadway play, and I believe I saw some videos on YouTube. I guess they were segments from it. Very funny, uh, old Jews telling jokes, and you, you put that together. So I, I did. That. Yeah. I, I co-wrote that and co-produced it, and it ran for a year and a half in New York and for six months in Chicago. It's still playing around the country. It, it, it will play for years down in Florida. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, it plays everywhere now. So it, and. That was an incredible pleasure for me. It was really fun. Name of the book once again, My Mother's Kitchen, Breakfast, Lunch, Dinner, and the Meaning of Life. And we've been talking with uh, Peter Gethers today. Peter, a pleasure talking to you. Hopefully we can do it again. God bless uh, your mom. She was a wonderful woman, I can tell. And uh, good luck with the book. Thank you so much. That was great. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids, right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMilesMedia.com.